Hi, chemistry students. Let's continue on talking about the integrated rate laws. Uh, real quickly, we're going to look at a way to determine the order of a reaction by using a set of experimental data. One experiment and one experiment only can do this. And the way we go about it is we make a graph of data. So let's take a look at, the, uh, at, at any one of these. Here's zero order. If we take a look, we've got this concentration of our reactant at any time, uh, less the concentration we started with is equal to minus this little a is the stoichiometric coefficient. Let's just assume that's going to be 1, so minus k times t. So the only things that can change here, the only thing that change in time, is the concentration and the time itself. Recall that this is just the rate constant, the one we've talked about before. And while the amount that we start with can vary, once we set it, once we say that we've got one molar of stuff when we start, or two molar of something when we start, that's a constant. It doesn't change during the reaction. How much we started with does not change. So we have two variables, which I'm going to circle. Well, this leads me to the idea that maybe I can make a graph of those two variables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to linearize this. So I'm going to erase a little bit just so we have a clear picture of what's going on. And I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to get the concentration, whatever formats it, it's in, all by itself on one side. And when I do this, I can notice that it looks like the equation for a line. y equals m times x plus b, where the time is my x variable and the concentration is my y variable. And that means that my slope is right here. This means that m is the same thing as negative k, negative the rate constant. So if I can find this slope from doing this analysis, I'll be able to find the rate constant. And my initial concentration should be my y-intercept. That's not, that's not nearly as important because we did make that stuff. We should know what we, what we have there. So if we make a graph of this, it's going to look something like this. Concentration of my A versus time. I know that my rate constants are always positive. Therefore, this negative number, this negative sign multiplied by the positive value is going to give me a negative answer for my slope. So my slope is going to be negative. And I'm going to get a graph that looks something like this. There's my graph of some zero order data. This would be zero order. And you might ask yourself, OK, great. So what, what's the use of all this? Well, the way I would go about getting and using this information is I would first take some experimental data for a unimolecular reaction. So this is just experimental data. What data is it? Well, it's concentration versus time data. And if I take concentration versus time data for any one of uh, any reaction, I can then make four different graphs with each one of these each one of these four integrated rate laws. And here's the beauty. It's only going to be linear. I'm only going to get a line y equals mx plus b if my data is that order. So, let me give you an example of how that might look. If I was to do the same thing run the same ex run an experiment get the data and it was not zero order my data might look like this and as you can see that's not very that's not a straight line at all this is curving see how it's curving since it's curving it's not a straight line and what i could do is if if i plotted the zero order axis which is concentration versus time and I get a curve, then I know that my data is not zero order, and I can rule it out. I'm not zero order. That's what I can do in this particular case. All right, let's try this again real quick for a different order. We'll do any of the others. Let me erase real quick. All right, so let's do this for second order. So for second order, I know that I have 1 over A at any particular time minus 1 over A naught is equal to a k t. Once again, let's just assume that k is equal or that the, the little stoichiometric coefficient a is equal to one. So we get k t. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to once again remind myself, there's my variables. I've underlined them. My, temp, my time can change. And as my time changes, the concentration changes. These other two things, they are constants. So I'm going to put my concentration on one side. Just going to leave it where it is. And I'm going to move everything else to the other. So I get k times t plus 1 over a naught. And I can see that this is in the form of a line. y equals m times x plus b. And what this says is my y-axis is 1 divided by the concentration of a. So if I make my graph, my y-axis will be 1 over the concentration of A. As you see right here, once again, time is my x-axis. And I also see here that my, my slope, m, is equal to k. And since k is always positive, then the slope must be positive in this case. And I should get, if it's second order, I would get some sort of experimental data that would move off in a linear fashion. So if it is second order, if it is second order, then I know that those are the units, or those are those, that's the y-axis label, and I get a nice linear relationship with my data. It's not perfect, of course, but it's good enough. But if it wasn't second order, how would it look? Well, if it wasn't second order, the data might look like this. And you can see that that is certainly not what linear, it's got a curve to it. While this one, on the other hand, is fairly straight. Just to show you the trend, it goes off in that direction. So what we can do is run one experiment, monitor the concentration as time progresses, and then make four different plots. The plot that's linear, and there'll only be one, will be the exact order of our particular unimolecular decomposition. There you have it.